Time, baby. Made it. Made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jump up. <and> down. <laughs> Yeah, they'll do. They'll come running. I would try that if I were you. Bird noise. Yeah. <laughs> Any time, you know, road runner. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, no problem. Any tips I can give you guys, I'll, I'm more than happy. To Tell us your names. Tyrell Thompson. Trevor Thompson. I am from Helper, Utah. It's close to Price, Utah. And I work at an industrial power plant in Huntington. I live in St. George, Utah, and I'm a counselor at a therapeutic boarding school called Diamond Ranch Academy. My name is David Koch, uh, from uh, Donnelly, Idaho, Central Idaho, up in the mountains. I'm Zach Owens, live in a small town outside of Boise, Idaho, Melba. I care take a small ranch, just take care of animals, uh, maintenance, buildings, stuff like that. Yeah, for work, uh, I work at a place called Silver Creek Supply. We sell plumbing and irrigation supplies, and I manage the, the yard outside, so. I'm also a power ranger in my spare time. <laughs> yeah, yellow. No. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the black one. Tell us a little bit about family. Oh, here's okay. the trauma. Here we go. <laughs> uh, so I am I am a single male. What he's trying to say is he has a bunch of extra time and a bunch of extra money. Yes. Because I, on the other hand, I have a wife and I have two little boys. I mean, it was tough leaving because um, yesterday was my wife's birthday. Happy birthday, babe. I love you. Thanks for letting me leave on your birthday. Um, but uh, no, I got two little boys. I got a one and a half year old and a three and a half year old. Oh, it's it's chaos, but I love it. I can't wait till they're old enough to start coming on adventures like this with me. I have uh, two boys. It's me and my two boys, Grayson and Tayden. My oldest son, Grayson, was a little upset, didn't want dad to go, <laughs> but he gave me a, a good luck necklace to have uh, with me, so he's gonna help dad out. I, I've got three kids at home, seven, four, and one and a half, and my wife is a champion. She's she's home without me, and she was really encouraging to go. But it, it's always hard to to leave all three kids. How did you guys get into hunting? Uh, so uh, early on, we grew. I grew up in rural South Central New Mexico, and uh, we I was just kind of injected into nature. My dad took me on one hunt. He worked on the Mescalero Indian Reservation. They gave cow tags out, and. Uh, I, we got to hunt on the reservation, which is really well managed, and there's just tons of bulls. And I just remember this one time we were in this burn, and this bull was just bugling at us right in our face. We couldn't shoot him, obviously, but from then on, I was just kind of hooked. Uh, same for me. I've been hunting since I can remember. My dad. The earliest memories I have is my dad taking me on his trap line in California. Um, we moved to Idaho when I was like five, I think, and then from then on, chasing deer, elk predator hunting, antelope, bears. So I've been hunting since I, since my dad could carry me around on the trap line. So been hunting a long time. 
got into hunting uh, just growing up in a hunting family. Our dad, us following him around. That's a, that's an understatement. Sometimes too closely. <laughs> uh, and and he's he's been a really good mentor because he's he's such a purist and and really drove conservation and getting involved and. We both volunteer for, for a nonprofit group with the SFW and we've been on several captures and you know different types of projects around the state of Utah to help with conservation. And he's he's set that example for both of us and I had I had him growing up to be an example to me too and we both emphasize that same thing with our with our kids. Tell us uh, how you guys heard about Hunt Wars. I saw it on Instagram. Actually somebody DM'd me about it on Instagram. I was like, hey you see this competition show? And, checked it out and I was like, man, this is sweet. Obviously, I checked on the website and wanted to know more about the show, but after I heard about it, it was sweet. I called David and I was like, hey man, you should uh, you should apply, you know, our team for it. And, and the rest is history, really. We heard about Hunt Wars. We were at, we have a group of guys that always go to the Total Archery Challenge every year. And we were at the Total Archery Challenge this year. It's really surreal being here because we're we're just a bunch of kind of old school guys and small town guys and you know we've never tried to be somebody that's like famous on on social media. We just really enjoy hunting and we were both kind of on the way down going, is this is this really happening? We're they're really doing this, <laughs> and so we're we're excited. We're obviously, really grateful for the opportunity. I'm excited. This is a new country. It's new country for us. It's a new challenge, and I think just being in new country and new terrain is is exciting and that's kind of him and I both like it's that's what kind of drives us yeah the opportunity to come out here for this show hunt wars is just uh it's really cool I wanted to come out here for a long time and, and deer hunt with my bow out here and, and getting to do it in a competition form yeah. makes it more exciting for me just in the fact that I'm super competitive by nature so just adding the elf, el the element of a competition to it, you know, and then you have to be, there, I mean, the gamesmanship of it, like, do you shoot the first decent deer you see? Because, I mean, this is bow hunting, it ain't easy. We're on public land, there's people everywhere out here. So just the whole idea of how the competition's set up, um, you know, the points being for the, not only antler size, but, uh, the age of the deer um, that's really exciting because I always like to shoot mature animals you know and then and the the yardage of shot is really exciting because obviously I like to get as close as I can so just the whole format of the game is super excited it's super exciting for me just the whole competition of it and then obviously I love bow hunting so just getting out and being able to bow hunt and this amazing weather out here it's like Beautiful. 70 degrees and we're coming from freezing temperatures so this is awesome now, was, there was a little bit of a extra luck coming in for you guys on this one, right? Yeah, where there was already a team picked out for this. The team originally selected was injured and couldn't compete. And so we kind of last minute deal, got like three days notice, found out we won the drawing and we're like, let's go do it. Let's talk a little bit about your strategy to win. Well, <laughs> uh, the, the goal is to make as much noise and make yourself known to all the animals. So if you can befriend them, you can get close. But in all seriousness, we got one of the best shots in the country here with bow and arrow. And I feel very confident uh, that we're gonna, we're gonna take home the gold here. The main thing, obviously for him, is, is, is helping spot. I mean, that's gonna be, obviously in hunting, that's the toughest thing is finding the animal. It's different out here than what we're used to. We're used to the mountains high mountains in the pines. So, I mean, it's, it's gonna be a learning curve in the desert out here glassing, but I think once we find the first deer, then our eyes will kind of adjust. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I just gotta do my part. I gotta get into bow range and, and make the shot. You know, we've, we've talked to a couple people that have hunted this kind of, type of terrain, and, and they said, when you think you've glassed everything, glass more. Keep glassing. Which will be kind of my responsibility for him, I guess, is you know, no pressure. But just live behind the glass, get high and glass low. Any words for the other team? No, I wish him good luck. Yeah. I, I hope they tag out, absolutely. Um, yep. Obviously, I hope I shoot a bigger one to win the show, but no, I, no good luck. I don't want any wounded animals or anything like that, so. Just hope for a really good competition. This is a lot of fun and exciting to be here and, and to, the, like you said, the competition aspect is, is cool because you don't get to do, the, you know, the older you get, it's like the less stuff you get to do where it's competitive. So to be able to do this is, is very cool. Yeah, not me. I'm competing in whatever <laughs> I do in life. That's my wife. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. I hope they do good, too. 
Yeah, I think you got him beat with your hair, man. <laughs> yeah, I, it's got something. <laughs> Arizona meal deer day one, morning one. It is 7:20. We got a tip. This is a pretty good area because they like these base these foothills and get high and glass low. He'd have found like three or four bucks already. Oh, for sure. If he looks at his phone like this. To read. Then yeah, he'll spot drive down the road. Can I see that deer? Bedded? I see no, twitch. I can't see the deer. It's here. <laughs> it's here. It's right there. He's, he's pro status. There's just so much country, it's overwhelming. There's more up and down than you realize. Just like that, he disappeared, no way. We just seen a shooter. And about as quick as we seen him, he disappeared. So I'm trying to relocate him. He was cruising fast. I, I couldn't quite tell how many points he had. But I did notice that he had good mass. Decent frame. Yeah, good frame. He was, he was right here. Before somewhere, that. Somewhere in here. Yeah, he was before those trees. And more towards us. You probably could have seen him with your naked eye. I shouldn't have taken the glass off. I got too excited. Oh, he broke. Yeah, he's broke. That's what it is. Yeah, he was a big three point. And he broke that front tide. I know that those guys aren't good hunters. You can say it. You don't think the other guys are going to kill a deer? No, I don't. I really don't. This is hard. This is tough one. This is hard. This is tough one. I mean, the way those deer are moving, that is impossible to get in front of. Impossible.
speak right there, man. That looks, that is gnarly. Get in out of there. into the brush? Yep. See the does above him? Yep. Damn, he just went in. I know. Oh, yeah. Pretty sure yeah. he's like Yeah, that looked like a decent pop. Yep. Blasting this point in the heat for a few hours. We saw a doe in a fawn, but I just picked up a couple of does with the, the, the best buck we've seen on this trip. He's a good 4x4, four four, so kind of got a plan of stock right now and go after him. We still have plenty of daylight left. See what happens. These cows popping up are making me doubt my glassing abilities because they've been there the whole time and I didn't see them. It's just too thick. Got a buck spotted. Looks like a, it looked like a three point. He doesn't look huge. I can see his side profile now. He's starting to walk to the right. It's too nice to not see a deer right now. Yeah, when I had him at it, I, when he was on that rise, standing there forever. Did you see him on that yeah. hill with the does? Yep. So I was 125 or 135. Oh, that's all you were? Yeah, I was 135. God, I so much further than yeah. that. Yeah, I was 135 and I was just watching him. And he's he he's heavier than I thought. He was, no, probably, he was heavier? Yeah, he was probably 155 is my guess. Okay. Just no, I, I came right on him. I got to the big wash. Yeah. I was 60 across from him before they even jumped, I bet. No, yeah, you were right there. They jumped when I went in the wash because yes. I just went, oh, yep. I just went through the brush because yeah. I was like, oh, they're a couple hundred yards yep. away. Yeah, they, they jumped right when you got into the wash. So you want to come back here in the morning? I think it'd be smart. Okay. There's a lot. I mean, we didn't see half the deer that are in here either, you know. There's so many deer tracks. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, there were so many deer tracks. Got some coffee this morning. Oh yeah, at the Thompson Coffee Shop. Yeah, our uh, opponents hooked it up and gave us a cup of coffee, which is really nice. I hope they didn't put like a laxative in it <laughs> or anything like that. But uh, morning two hunt wars is starting off better than morning one. We did have coffee. Out in the deer up here. So 
like I've said before, this is so much different than what we're used to in Idaho as far as glassing. So I mean, it's even harder to grid because it's flat. So I'm just trying to just keep hitting the same stuff over and over and over. These deer just appear out of nowhere. We're kind of up more in the hills right now, which I, we haven't seen as many deer up here, but we did see some does in this pocket yesterday. And it's just like the, the run is, it's almost peaking right now. So I'm gonna look in here, see if I find those does, see if a buck came in here last night with them. I just spotted my first deer in the morning. Right now all I see is this one doe standing there, middle of the flat. The surface is really spotty out here. Should probably get my phone off airplane mode. David probably has a 180 bug. He's been calling me 50 times. What are you seeing? <laughs> I think we're picking up some drug cartel. We might have to change channels. <laughs> oh, dude. No. Oh. He's a tank, but he's a 4x3. I'm still going to shoot him if I can. He's heavy. Looks like a mature buck. Sweet buck. Holy cow. If he was a four point, he still is going to score pretty good. And he's going to dog this one doe. And he is going to just run her probably. It's going to be real tough. You're going to have to probably watch him all morning and hope they bed in a good spot. Okay. So I just glassed up this doe. And I, I figured there was probably a buck around her. And sure enough, she moved her a little to the right. And I, I glassed him in his bed. Stood up for a minute, but he just bedded back down. Best buck we've seen on this trip. He's a four by three, but he's deep forked, heavy, just a mature giant body Roman nose. Is a good buck. I want him bad. He's not super wide, but he's just he's got mass and he's just thick. A really big body buck. Awesome deer. I just want to give it a second till the sun's on him and see what they're gonna do. They're not in a bad spot. Problem is the wind's going right at him, so I'll have to go all the way around, come back, which I need to anyway, because he's facing this way, but... Did she bed in those bushes? See, I have to come in from this side, then. I need to get... I need to loop around getting that wash. Yeah. Gotta come up and around those. Or sneak beneath them, whichever one you want to do. Oh, I can see it, and I remember, see, the sun's on it. Yeah. If I can get on that, I could come right behind them and there's thick brush. I bet you if I got to 
that brush. To that bush up to the right from him. 40, 35, 40 yards right there. So today we remembered these. In Arizona, it is legal to use radios when you're hunting. And it's very effective. And we would have been tagged out yesterday, but this is a better buck, so maybe it's a blessing in disguise. I mean the beep. Hey, you gotta copy beep in my ear. You can turn that off. I can't. I've tried. Are you serious? Yeah, I, I don't know. Or maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. That's probably more like. He's uh, I can't, I can't exactly tell where he is. He's uh, I think he's in the near the wash or beyond the wash. But the deer are now up and moving around a little bit. So uh, we had spotted that buck earlier. Zach took off after him probably 15, 20 minutes after he took off, the buck got up and the doe got up and that buck started chasing that doe pretty hard. And uh, as Zach got down here, I had a lot of trouble picking him up. I couldn't find Zach. I, could, I was trying to keep track of the deer because they were moving so much and I couldn't ever pick him up. And he was texting me from down there and they dropped into this really thick wash and I lost them. And then I, after that, I was able to pick Zach up, but I couldn't pick the deer back up. So, but eventually I saw Zach and he was at the ready. And I was like, well, he must be looking at those deer. Like he wouldn't just be standing there like that if it wasn't for nothing. And sure enough, eventually I kind of panned over and I saw the buck and then I saw Zach draw. 